Hello, comic book fans. I have a bunch of nice books that uh, I accumulated over the last couple of months during the summer, including a comic book convention I went to about a month ago. And I want to show them off for you today before I put them away and box them up. I'm going to show them off in this video. I hope you like it. All right. First one here is uh, Reign of the Superman. Superman, yep. Uh, number 82. Um, I went to a comic book convention about a month ago in Connecticut and I met Dan Jurgens and um, I got him to sign right along here and he was a perfect gentleman. Uh, he doesn't even charge for his autograph or anything. He just had like a little, uh, you know, a little jar on his table to uh, donate to a charity and that was like optional. You didn't have to do that if you didn't want to. So I was more than happy to uh, donate to his charity and he was a perfect gentleman. And in fact, uh, being that this is a foil cover comic book, he even warned me. He said, uh, before you put that back in the bag, make sure you let it dry because uh, it's, it's all foil and, and it'll smudge. So uh, I didn't know that because I never had a foil comic book signed before. So he was really nice, perfect gentleman. What a thrill that was. And I got some other books signed by him that I sent off for grading and I'm waiting for them to come back. So I don't know, maybe I'll see them before Christmas. Who knows? So that's that. All right, next up, also at the show was um, Jim Starlin uh, of Thanos and Infinity Gauntlet fame, and I got him to sign, so he signed right here, and uh, he was great to meet too, absolute thrill, I totally geeked out, I was like a complete fangirl when I met this guy, because um, this was, in the 90s, this was, um, after high school, this was the comic book series that got me back into collecting comic books again because um, I kind of dropped out during my high school years when I was younger. So when Infinity Gauntlet came out in the early 90s, I, I got back in and this is just awesome. Uh, Starlin signed down here. And then of course, this is all George Perez artwork. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, so this is uh, a real treat for me. So that's really cool. So while I was there, um, I went to this uh, comic book convention that was at an Indian casino in Connecticut uh, called Mohegan Sun, and they had, um, you know, casinos and stuff in the convention hall and everything, and my wife and I went, and she was nice enough to buy me these books, these DC Millennium books, you can tell by the, the gold foil and how the image is kind of tilted on the side, they're reprints, so this is um, Wonder Woman's first cover appearance. Um, you know, so I always love that because uh, I don't think I'm ever getting that book because it's uh, quite expensive. It's probably worth more than my house, but be that as it may, um, she got me that. And then she also got me uh, this one. This is Wonder Woman number one, summer issue uh, of her own series um, after her other appearances uh, did really well. So shout out to my wife, uh, Mrs. Goat 99. She got me these books. Um, while we were there, because I know the uh, convention wasn't exactly the most fun thing for her, but you know, she indulged me in everything and allowed me to do all my uh, convention stuff, all my nerd geek stuff. And then, you know, we went to the uh, casino afterwards and did some gambling and eating and all that good stuff after that later on. So these are some of the other books that I got while I was there. Uh, this is Captain America number 25. Uh, this is an homage cover. It's also an action figure cover. You can tell us that's an action figure. So this is an homage cover to um, Captain America. And uh, it's number 25, so it's also the uh, first appearance of when Sam takes the mantle of Captain America. So that was pretty cool. Dig that. So, um, so I got a lot of nice books. And um, I went to this one dealer who was a little eccentric. And he was selling two books together, and he refused to um, break them apart. The first one was this one, uh, which is the one I really wanted, um, Hulk 377, First Professor Hulk. So um, he had it bundled together in sort of a, a plastic bag with um, uh, like a, in a magazine thing, you know, sort of bag. And he also had it with this one, uh, Incredible Hulk number 377, the second print. And he refused to break them up. And I was like, okay, no problem. Um, I didn't really want this one here because I have this one in the slab in a 9.6. And I didn't see the need to really get extra ones. But he refused to uh, break them up. Um, so I actually asked him. I said, well, being that you won't break them up, will you come down on the price? And he said, yeah. So he did. So that was kind of odd. So um, I don't know. He could have just um, kept the, the uh, 
kept the second book here for himself because I already have this in a slab and it's it's really nice. But uh, I didn't see the need for a second one. But uh, this was the one that I really wanted, 377, uh, first Professor Hulk. Um, so that was pretty cool. So it was nice to have that because the, the, that was the one I really wanted. And then this was a book that uh, I wanted for the longest time because um, I didn't know what was going to happen with that What If series. Um, so what if... Uh, Spider-Man had rescued Gwen Stacy and she didn't die. So I didn't know if the Disney Plus series was going to have any kind of ramifications on these um, books from the 70s and the 80s, I guess. So I was just like, oh, let me just get this one because I have a bunch of the other ones. But I always wanted um, this one and I never was able to get it um, until now because, um, I don't know, it, this was one of those books that's not particularly expensive, but... Anytime I came across it, the price was too high or the condition was like really shabby and beat up. So I just wanted like a decent, nice, presentable uh, copy that I could have for my collection. And, you know, because uh, I, I like the uh, the artwork on it. It's really nice. So, um, yeah, so this is a nice copy. I'm very happy with that. So that was cool. So then um, I also got a couple of X-Men books. X-Men 168, Kitty Pride, And then... X-Men 169, the one that goes after that. Real nice, pretty good. So um, this same dealer, he had uh, some other cool stuff. Um, oh, let me just fix this a little. There we go. Sorry about that. Yeah, so um, same dealer, he had like a lot of stuff from around this, this era. So he had uh, the Micronauts. So I got two copies of that, Micronauts number one. Uh, I always liked that when I was a kid. I had a bunch of the action figures. My brother had the better ones, though, um, and I always used to be jealous of him because he got better ones. I had, like, uh, maybe six or seven, and I think he had about 10, 12, maybe. So, but he had, like, all the better ones, and I was always jealous of him. But, you know, happy to have uh, some Micronauts in my collection now. So, um, and then I uh, shopped around some more, and I found uh, someone else who had some cool modern books, um, had some Young Avengers, now this is like the second series. This isn't the first series that's really super hot, but uh, I got this because it has uh, America Chavez on there. Um, she's a real hot character right now and uh, a lot of spec on her. So uh, that's number one. So I think that's volume two of hers. So, um, or Young Avengers with her included. The original series doesn't have her. So I think they added her in later on. So I got this one. Uh, this is number one. And then I got this one as well. This is Scotty Young. Variant cover, pretty cool, you know, dig that, so pretty silly. But, uh, you know, I'm kind of conflicted about some of these uh, baby variant covers. Sometimes they're pretty cool, and then sometimes they seem overly childish. But still pretty cool, I guess, um, but they had it there. And then they had one more variant, um, this one too, also from the same series. Here we see America Chavez again. Um, I just bought it mainly just because of her, so that was pretty cool. And then, um, what else did I get? Oh, I got this. Because I'm always working on my Fat Albert run. Hey, hey. So, yeah, Fat Albert with the Cosby kids. He goes to an antique shop, and he's sitting in that chair, and I guess he's too uh, obese to uh, get out of there. So, um, I don't know. His friends have to help him out. and Because uh, he's too obese. I don't think that would fly nowadays. But, you know, that is what it is. So, that's what's going on with that. Okay, another cool book that I got was this is Poe Dameron number 10. Um, this book was, um, this came out in 2017. And in early 2017, this was when uh, Marvel Comics was doing a 40th anniversary of um, the original Star Wars movie. Um, and they came out with 40, uh, as you can see here, 48 different covers. This is number two. Um, so this is the second one that came out um, from that run of all variant homage covers across all the different Star Wars books. You can see it's Poe Dameron. It, you know, it was on the regular title. It was on Darth Maul had one, Darth Vader. They had a bunch of miniseries, all that. And um, what's special about this book is that um, this was like the first cover um, that had um, Carrie Fisher 
Princess Leia on it uh, shortly after she died because she ended she passed away at the tail end of 2016 and then in 2017 a couple weeks later in January I believe uh, this book came out and I got a whole bunch of them I have some slabs of this but when I come across this book uh, I can't say no um, nice Stuart Eminen hope I'm pronouncing that right uh, cover and um, yeah this is really nice they, they refer to this as a, a trading card variant because of this border around here um, all of them sort of have that um, really nice uh, the or 48 of them, quite a few. Um, some of them are um, quite popular and in demand, but um, this was the one that did it for me because it had uh, Princess Leia on it shortly after Carrie Fisher died, and I got a whole bunch of them, including some slab ones. So um, really cool. Uh, love that. So, oh, okay. This next one I got, um, I got Frozen, and I got three copies of this one. Um, this one is Frozen, and this is um, the movie adaptation um, for the movie, and uh, yeah, movie adaptation adaptation for the movie, right? Um, so this came out from uh, Joe Books, it says here, that's an uh, independent comic book company, I think, out of Canada that had some financial difficulties and went bankrupt, and um, so shortly after this book came out, they weren't able to make any more, and I believe the same exact book um, was was made and produced by another company called Aspen, and um, so the the early ones, um, which these all are um, from Joe Books, you can tell by this here with the little tree thing. Um, those ones um, were only made for a short amount of time. I think came out just around the time as the movie was coming out, and they're hard to get because of the whole bankruptcy thing and the fact that many of these comic books were given to uh, children, and um, they probably ended up messed up in toy boxes and all that, um, not taken care of at all. And one of the strange things about this book is uh, it doesn't have a number on it. So uh, this is an unnumbered uh, Frozen book from uh, Joe Books. Pretty cool. So the Aspen ones are um, books that came later on, sort of like a second print, I guess, from a different company. So um, pretty cool, I guess. All right, so next one I got is um, a nice art germ cover. Um, this is back row number 12, uh, art germ, real early art germ, very, very pretty cool, um, nice, I like this. Some of his earlier covers I like a lot better than some of his more modern, newer ones, but like with any artist, a lot of his stuff is hit and miss, and um, the back row, I really dig this one. So um, what else did I get here? Oh, okay, uh, Shogun Warriors. I think I got that from the same person as the um, the Micronauts from earlier. So I uh, got mixed up together, I guess. But uh, yeah, so this is pretty cool. Um, I had this when I was a kid, but it was just beat to hell. And uh, this one is a much nicer copy, and I always want to get another one. So that was cool. Then, um, oh, another one I got is uh, Wonder Woman number 80. Uh, I got this because it says Hero Sandwich on it, and I'm living in New York now, and in New York they call sub sandwiches, big long sandwiches, they call them heroes. So in Boston we call them subs, but around here where I'm living now, um, they call them hero sandwiches, and, you know, dinosaurs trying to bite Wonder Woman here. So I couldn't say no to that, had to have it. So, oh, this one, okay. This book is one of the books that I've been trying to get for a long, long time in good condition. Okay, this is Amazing Spider-Man number 70, 19, from 1971, number 99, right here. Um, and this cover is kind of crazy because look at this. You got this guy pulling a pistol on this guy as a cop because they're in a prison and they're having a riot. So, um, so this guy's a cop. You can see right here with his badge. And uh, this, this, this guy, he's getting ready to shoot him. And it says he had panic in the prison, of course. You can tell. So, um, yeah, this one... This was one of those books that's not particularly key or anything like that, but I just wanted a nice one, a nice condition um, copy of this because, um, again, I could never find a nice one in decent money, and I didn't want to pay eBay prices and all that stuff. So um, I just wanted to get, like, a good one that presents nice because this is a crazy cover, and I just don't think that um, they could do something like that nowadays. So, yeah, they're having, having a riot, and, yeah... So kind of crazy. This guy's got a bat or a stick or something. So yeah, they're, they're getting ready to go go crazy and Spidey's in there. So that's pretty cool. I always wanted that. That's a, that's a crazy 70s cover. This book came out in 1971. So that was quite a while ago. And uh, 
happy to have that. So, um, and this one is a David Finch cover of Wonder Woman 37, um, sketch variant, I guess you call it. Um, it's a ratio, maybe one in 25 or one in 50. I don't recall which it is, but, uh, yeah, pretty cool. I always like this. I like, most of the time I like the colored books, uh, better than the black and white books, but, um, uh, this one's pretty cool. As you can see the eagle here and you can see Wonder Woman with her sword and all that. Uh, real, real nice. Uh, David Finch artwork on, uh, the new 52, um, batch of Wonder Woman books that he, uh, took over. Cause I think he took over in the issue prior to this issue, issue 36, I believe. Um, so this was like his second, um, uh, cover that he did for that. So that was pretty cool. And I was pretty happy to get that. So, uh, another book that I got was Ghost Rider number two. Um, yeah, this, I have another copy of this, but it's absolutely trashed up, and this was like just an upgrade for me. So this is the um, number two in its own title from the early 70s, 73, 74, I believe. I forget which. But yeah, pretty cool. Um, always wanted that. Um, Son of Satan, Damien Hellstrom, all that stuff in there. So um, happy to have that in a higher grade copy. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Oh, okay. So here's my newest comic books. These just came yesterday. Um, this is Jenny Frizen, Eat the Rich. Uh, this came yesterday. I haven't even had this book 24 hours. This one is the 1 in 25 um, sort of grayscale, I guess you call it, because she did another uh, one that I think is the cover, just a variant cover C, I think, something like that, where her dress, the stripes on her dress are blue. And... Um, you, you know, um, pretty cool. And then um, when I took this out of the package, I saw that there's these little seagulls here. I thought these were like smudges on the book and I was like, oh no. So um, I wanted to get this book. And then I also wanted to get, there's another one that goes with this. That's uh, a one in 50, um, also known as a one per store variant. And um, that's uh, a little more expensive, which is this one that has like the shiny foil. See, you can see like her gloves and then where it says eat the rich on the bottom, it's like shiny foil. So this is a uh, one in 50. I believe this is a one in 25. And then this is like one in 50, one per store variant. I don't know. I don't run a comic book store, so I'm not exactly sure um, if you were only allowed to get one, but I did a little research on this, at research on it, and uh, I was unable to find uh, definitively whether it's just a one in 50 or a one in store variant. So I wasn't liking eBay prices. So one of the things I did was I discovered that Boom Studios, who makes this comic, um, has a on online store that you can purchase from. So I decided to purchase from them directly um, a lot cheaper than um, what eBay was asking for for this one, because this this Jenny Frizen um, is, you know, kind of fancy with, you know, with the, the foil and the uh, Gucci Fendi, real fancy uh, shiny foil action so i couldn't say no because i saw this on someone else's youtube video i can't remember who but when i saw it i was like oh i gotta have it um because yeah I, I dig jenny frizzen and again with the seagulls when i took it out of the bag i was like oh man uh you know I, I thought this was like some kind of smudge or like you know color transfer or something but it's just um birds you know seagulls i guess because she's over here near a pier or a dock whatever this is there's water down here so when she's doing her thing so yeah so um it's not dirt like i thought it was so okay so that, those are my newest comic books i haven't even had them 24 hours yet so i figured i'd show those pretty cool another book that i got was this one this is um grim fairy tales number 100 this is from uh San Diego Comic Con in 2014. Um, I got this at the, the convention in Connecticut that I mentioned before. Um, I always pick these up because it's a San Diego Comic Con uh, variant, and I believe there's only 750 of them ever made. And I always like this one. It's really cool. Um, it's sort of like a um, magazine homage. Um, Maxim, I believe it is. Yeah, because that was a big deal back then, I guess. So, yeah, it's made to look like Maxim magazine. It's got the San Diego Comic-Con thing there. And I always get this one. So um, this book um, is a little noteworthy to my collection because this is the first comic book I ever got uh, in a slab. And I'll show that off now. So because um, around this time, this is the same book. And it's, a, uh, it's in a slab. So there you go. 
uh, it's a 9.8. This was the first slab that I had ever gotten in my life because um, I I uh, got back into comic books around 2013, but I didn't, never bought any slabs because I didn't fully understand the grading and all that stuff and the pricing and all, all of that. So since I like this book so much, um, I said, let me get one. Let me see what a 9.8 looks like. Let me see what a slab looks like. Um, Cause this was right after, uh, this came out in 2014. And this was right about the time I think that they went to one of their newer holders. Um, Cause they used to have a generation before that where the, the white pages um, used to be over here and not under there where the, the, the grade score thing is. So um, this was when they just changed their cases to similar to the ones that they have now, I believe. And I was like, okay, let me let me get these and see what it's all about and see if I like it. And of course I did. I was like, oh, these are these are nice. And this was fairly cheap at the time. It's gotten a little more expensive now, but this was the first slab that I ever got because I just wanted to have like a sort of a test drive one and not, you know, get anything too expensive in case I didn't like it. So being that I got this one um, at the, the convention, it uh, makes me nostalgic for this one because this is the first slab that I ever got. And I figured I might uh, throw show that off for you. So hope you enjoyed that. So... Pretty cool. So, all right, let me just clear these books off and we will continue. Okay, so this is another book that I got. This is a variant for uh, Batman 66. Um, there we go. Let me just adjust that a little. Sorry. Batman 66 meets Wonder Woman 77. So, this is supposed to be Adam West and this is supposed to be like Linda Carter. And this is a variant, I believe. Um, I picked this up um, at the con. So, um, some of these, you know, they, they, they're a little. Uh, Silly, you know, sort of like the, um, the the TV show with Batman there. So see how it says Bat Shield. So that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, so this is this is nice um, cover. So I figured I'd get that. Um, and then let's see. Oh yeah, so this is another um, Wonder Woman I got. This is Wonder Woman Black and Gold number one. This is a one in twenty five variant. I was able to pick that one up. Um, I really like that. How she's like coming out of the page there. Really nice. That's, that's awesome. I dig that. And her lasso is in gold and, you know, uh, mostly black and white pretty much and a lot of gray. But, you know, a lot of gold accents and stuff, hence Wonder Woman black and gold. So um, pretty cool. So also, um, what else did I get here? Oh, so I got a um, Yara Floor um, foil, foil deal. So... Um, I come to find out that all these spots are like intentional. I guess it's part of the artwork and stuff, so it's not um, any kind of printing defect or anything like that. Because I was digging the uh, the Yara Floor books, and I thought that was pretty cool, so I picked those up. Um, really nice. So that's that's that. So I got some more Yara Floor books. This is Wonder Woman Future State. This is her first appearance, uh, future first full appearance, I should say. Pardon me. Um, yeah, so I got uh, three of these. These are limited to um, certain certain uh, online stores, I think. And uh, this is known as the Matt Taylor uh, Team variant. This is called. I have a bunch of them that I put on pre-order, but I saw some some more of these at the convention, and um, you don't see see these a lot for Yara Floor, but that's her first full appearance. And um, yeah, I, I think that this is um, a kind of a sleeper book for her because not a lot of people show it and not a lot of people seem to have it. So um, I dig that and uh, one to look out for if you can find it because I think they only made like a limited amount, like maybe 2,000, 3,000, something like that. I'm not sure. So um, and then another Wonder Woman book I got, this is a DC logo variant. Um, this is um, the first appearance of Artemis. Um, so this is pretty cool. And let me see here. Yeah, this is a Brian Bolden cover. First appearance of Artemis. So um, nice DC logo, not easy to get. Um, pretty good condition too, because a lot of them come beat up and this has got like some dark uh, corner, dark borders and stuff. So not easy to get. And then um, let's see, what else do we get here? Oh, this is uh, Sensational She-Hulk, number 60. This is the uh, final issue um, of this series. And it says, okay, kids, we had a deal. Okay, hand over those X-Men. So uh, she's homaging the um, uh, she Sensational She-Hulk number one, um, where she's holding in her hand, um, telling you to buy it. Otherwise, she's going to come and take your X-Men books. And then, of course, here's uh, her original first appearance. Like, they kind of threw that in there, I guess. So um, this is the final issue of that series, and I like it because it's a pink cover. Um, and it's, it's in pretty good condition. Um, 
a lot of them are not easy to get like that because um, you know when you have uh, these books that have one one color like that it, it seems like any kind of spine ticks or damage or anything like that will just like jump right out at you and um, ruin that so uh, yeah so that was that so and then from the same I think from the same person I believe I was able to get uh, two copies of uh, Action Comics 894 I think this is like the, the first appearance of um, of death in DC Comics and not um, in her other series. So um, I've never read this, so I just got this for the first time uh, now. So uh, it's not, it, it's kind of a first appearance of sorts, but not like her full on, um, cause she first appears in um, that Sandman series. But she, um, this is like, I, I think her first appearance um, in DC Comics uh, proper. So yeah, so pretty cool. So that's, that's pretty cool. All right, let me take these down. Okay. Thank you for watching and sticking with me this far. I do appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Then I was also able to get uh, Wolverine number 50. This is a die cut cover. Um, you can see, like, when you open this up, you see, like, the full art. This has, like, like his claws ripping at the through the cover. Nice 90s uh, gimmick. You know, always love that. Um, so this was one that was in pretty nice shape too. Uh, I hope it's not too too shiny, but yeah, um, real nice. So I dig that. Um, so happy to have that because the other one I had was trash and I was glad to get an upgrade. And then I got um, two copies of uh, Secret Wars number seven. That, that book's heating up a little bit. So that's always good. Um, glad to see that. So the Secret Wars title, they're... they're People are speculating that, uh, you know, at some point the MCU may go in that direction. They, they may well, probably. It's such a great uh, storyline to uh, mine that for um, stuff, similar to how they did the Avengers, and, you know, Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity Wars, all that good stuff. So that was pretty awesome. Um, yep, yeah, so happy to get uh, two copies of that. Okay, so next one I got is um, Wonder Woman 51. This is a shiny foil variant. Um, 51 is pretty cool. It's hard to see because I have it in a, um, in a mylar inside of a top loader, but um, it's like snowing and she's got like the, you know, the, the coolness of her breath uh, coming out and everything. So I always like this one. And uh, this was uh, sold at a couple of different conventions, um, including the one in Boston and one other one, I think. And uh, instead of calling it like some sort of convention edition, they call it a boutique edition so make it sound more fancy than it really is but still pretty cool glad to have that um and then another uh, foil copy foil cover copy that i got is uh wonder woman 26 another foil one uh i got it from the same person so uh this was all pretty cool um dig that so um awesome so, and then um, for me, I think the, the best uh, Wonder Woman cover of the year uh, that sold out really quick uh, online from one of the online uh, comic book uh, dealers was um, Wonder Woman Black and Gold. This is from Warren Lau, or Lo, L-O-U-W, I believe. L-O-U-W, yeah, spelling. So, uh, yeah, so this has the uh, trade dress here, uh, strategically placed, uh, where no one wants to see it. So there's that one. It was a two-issue set, and then there was the other one where it has... It's not a virgin uh, trade dress deal, but I guess they call it sort of a minimal um, trade dress thing, and you can see it more clearly and more vividly. So, yep, doesn't she look lovely? Yeah, I dig that. So I'm liking it. Real nice. That, to me, I think is the uh, one of the uh, prettiest uh, Wonder Woman covers for this year. So dig that. Not easy to come by those because those sold out like uh, rapidly online. So, um, and then yeah, a little bit of uh, speculation stuff. So yeah, this is Agents of Atlas. It's um, it's pretty much the first appearance of everybody on here except for Silk and uh, Arrow, which um, I think she debuted in uh, comic books in Japan, I believe. So this is like her American. Um, debut, you know, and a lot of these other characters, so they're, they're specking that they're, there's going to be a TV series, and they're doing casting for that, and all that, so that's good, so I got that, um, got a second copy of that, because I was able to find it, and then um, 
I also got, this is the exact same book, but um, probably less popular because it doesn't have um, all those characters on it, but it's like some kind of connecting cover. And, um, but it's, it is the same book, this, the first appearance is in there. And um, those, this is a variant, and the, the other one I showed you is a first print. Now, um, I do not have the second print, but I do have the third print of the same book. Now, this is tough. This one is only, I think, maybe two or 3,000 ever came out. It's not a store variant. It's just a book that was in low um, demand, low orders. So this is the, um, the third print of um, New Agents of Atlas. Um, this, it's the same book as the other ones, just a, a third printing. And then uh, after that was um, Arrow, who I said um, was in her own series, I believe, in Japan. And they gave her a series here. And this is a, a 1 in 50. This is number one. This is a 1 in 50 book from Jay Anacleto, or Anacleto. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce that man's name. So um, this is a 1 in 50 book that, um, for Arrow for her own series. So um, that's, that's really cool. So another thing I got, um, this is pretty cool. This is, I don't know if this is all going to fit on here. Let's see, back it up a little. This is the Empire Strikes Back comic book um, adaptation. It's like a large treasury. Um, so this is uh, Marvel Special Edition number two which incidentally I found out that Marvel Special Edition number one came out five years before this. This came out in 1980. So this is like a full comic book adaptation of um, The Empire Strikes Back, the whole, there you go, it says um, the complete story in one issue. So, um, so this came out around the time of uh, when Empire Strikes Back came out in May of 1980. And in fact, uh, Marvel got in trouble for this because they um, kind of leaked this came out roughly the same time as the movie when it was in the theater or slightly before. So it kind of um, spoiled the movie for, um, you know, before before it was released in theaters. So, you know, all the, the big reveals about uh, Luke Skywalker's father and all that stuff was all in here. But they did the same thing with the uh, mass market um, paperback uh, book as well because my friend had that. And he, he read it before we saw Empire Strikes Back, because I saw it on the first day it was out. So uh, he knew everything that happened. He was dying to tell me about it. I'm like, dude, don't tell me. I don't want to know nothing. So, but he wanted to tell me, so I was like, whatever. So, uh, and this is pretty cool, because, um, so this in a way was, um, like, the came out before, like, uh, the, the first appearance of, like, Yoda and Lando, and Boba Fett and all that, because you got to remember that was a five-part um, uh, series, you know, that I, I five, four or five issue series that um, started, and I think Star Wars 41, I think was the first one, and then Boba Fett is famously is 42. And um, so, yeah, those came out um, after the theatrical run of Empire Strikes Back was winding down. So, um, yeah, so this is pretty cool. And it's signed by the, the um, Al Williamson. Um, he signed this book. And uh, on the inside of this, um, there's a little certificate of authenticity that um, is inside of that. So, um, and unfortunately, Al Williamson has passed away. So that was pretty cool to see that. Um, and I didn't know about the certificate being inside until I flipped through it. So uh, and incidentally, he did the um, comic book adaptation for Star Wars 42. Uh, the cover, I believe, that has Boba Fett that's so famous that everybody loves. So, um, yeah, so this came out before that, but um, the other one is more valuable and more popular because that's like a, in a you know, regular comic book size um, format where this is like, look at how huge this is. Like, this is massive. Here's a regular size comic book and look at how big this thing is, you know? So, um, real big. So, um, so it did technically come out before, I guess, but, it, you know, the other one, the, the comic book uh, collectors have decided that... Um, you know, the other one is, is more expensive and, and um, that's the way it is. So, um, which I have it anyway. So, um, you know, no problem for me. But it's pretty cool because it doesn't seem to have any spine ticks. There's no problems with it or anything. Signed by Al Williams, Al Williamson, excuse me. Um, and like I say, he's passed away now. So, um, sadly. So, um, so that was a nice uh, thing, nice uh, book to get. So, okay, take all these down and then we'll go to the next one. So speaking of Boba Fett, here's another one. That's War of the Bounty Hunters. Uh, let's see, number one, that is a variant that I picked up. 
um, just because it's, it's just a cool cover buy. And uh, yeah, I definitely wanted to get that because um, anything with uh, Boba Fett is great, you know, usually, anyhow. So, and I've noticed in modern times, um, a lot of times Boba Fett covers don't have um, his trophy Wookie, Wookie braids that he has because that's um, the braided hair of a Wookie. Um, so that he keeps that. And a lot of times they don't show that. And I don't know why. But um, that's like old school Boba Fett. And uh, I always look for that, you know, anytime I see him, the, the braids of a Wookiee. So uh, really cool. So I dig that. So, oh, okay. The next thing I got, this is kind of a, like a spec um, situation for me for sure. Um, this is Justice League number 30. I got two copies of that, this one and this one. This is a cameo appearance. I believe the second cameo appearance um, of Jessica Cruz. I think they show like her hand or her arm or something like that or back or something like that. They don't really show her because the first one is in a Green Lantern book uh, before this. So there's a cameo um, that starts in the, um, the Green Lantern book. This is her second one. I got two copies of that. And then her first, um, you know, full appearance is um, Justice League 31. So when I was at the con, um, I found a person who was selling some, and um, I was able to get a whole bunch of them. So these are this is regarded as her first um, full appearance, and I got a whole ton of these. And um, these have this weird sticker on it. It says uh, right there, 4885. I don't know what that means because I didn't pay that. Um, some kind of weird thing. So I got a whole ton of these, and. Um, this is uh, regarded as Jessica Cruz's uh, first appearance. That's supposed to be her there. Um, so that's pretty cool. So I got a bunch of these. And then um, one other thing that I got, um, I didn't get it recently, but I'm just gonna show it just for reference, is um, something that goes with it is, uh, this is known as um, Justice League 31 combo pack. You'll see right here. Right here it says combo pack. This was a thing where um, DC Comics was trying to uh, launch like digital comics online. And what they were doing was um, for an extra dollar, because this is $3.99, this is $4.99, you would get like a digital code on the inside of these books. And um, these came wrapped in plastic. So this still has its original um, plastic bag that it, um, that's in there. I never took it out. Um, so, and then also too, you'll notice that like all the other characters, um, you know, like, you know, Batman, Wonder Woman, Lex Luthor, all of that, they're all um, sort of red where this one, you know, they're, they're more green. And of course, Jessica Cruz here, she stays green because she's a lantern, I guess. So, um, yeah, so this is her first appearance, but this is a um, combo pack book. Now, this is not as popular as um, the other ones because most people didn't want to pay an extra dollar to get that because they were like, oh, that's just a money grab by um, DC. So um, these did not sell well because um, people didn't want to pay all that extra money, but it made them more collectible later on. So if you come across one of these that has a digital um, digital copy inside, you know, um, that's an extra dollar, uh, it, it's definitely worth it because these are more scarce than, um, than this one. So I only have one copy of this. So I figured I'd show it out just for reference to show you guys. Um, so if you happen to see this one, it's not a, a second print or anything like that. It is a, um, here we go. It is a uh, first print, um, so I'll show you that. But um, yeah, it was it was more money and people didn't like that. So um, it didn't sell very well at the time, but that added to the collectability of it. So that's pretty cool. So, okay, so another book that I got, this is um, Star Wars. Um, here we go, just gonna adjust that a little. Yep, Star Wars um, number four. Darth Maul, Son of Dathomir. Now, I believe this book here was one of the final books ever that um, Dark Horse put out um, before they lost the license. So I think this came out, what, I want to say like 2014, I think. And then uh, I think in tw early 2015 was when um, Marvel Comics got um, the license back after all those years that uh, Dark Horse had it. So... Um, Darth Maul, son of Dathomir. Um, this, if I'm not mistaken, is either the might be the final book that Dark Horse ever did for Star Wars, or it's real close to it. Because um, right after this, they lost the license. So it's a, I believe it's a four-part story. So um, this is this is a pretty cool issue. 
and um, it's a good one to get if you can pick it up. Some of the other ones are um, tougher to get because they, um, they, a lot of them have black covers, and you know how that goes. It can be pretty tough. And then, oh, okay, so since we're doing Star Wars, this is a Midtown Comics um, purchase. I got one, two, because I have a friend that works at Midtown Comics, and he uh, sort of um, tipped me off about um, these books. And um, so, yeah, this is Darth Vader number one, the one in 50 variant. Um, two copies of that. This is Alex Ross. And this is um, the first appearance of Black Chrysanthemum. And Black Chrysanthemum, if I'm saying that correct, is a bounty hunter Wookiee that um, you will often see in these Darth Vader books and also um, with Dr. Aphra. So um, if Dr. Aphra ever gets her own um, movie or TV series, like people are saying she might, then um, Black Chrysanthemum would definitely be um, probably a logical choice for someone to, to put in there. So, um, so yeah, so speaking of Dr. Aphra, here we have, um, this is Darth Vader number three. This is the third printing uh, with the green cover. Um, these are made much less than the, the first um, the first one, first printing. So uh, this was made in four different printings. Uh, and then there was a, a one in 25 variant beyond that. So that's pretty cool. So this is the third printing of the first appearance of Dr. Aphra and these two droids here. So, uh, and then we see Darth Vader looming in the background um, where he's green. You don't see that a lot in modern books, but there it is. So pretty cool. So, um, so if that's the first appearance, then this is Darth Vader number four, the second appearance. Um, so this is the second appearance of Dr. Aphra in um, Darth Vader number four. That's the second printing. And then um, this is the third printing, also in that green. So see how they kind of did both of these sort of in like that, you know, that kind of green action there. So this is um, Darth Vader number four, third printing, uh, second, third printing, second appearance of Dr. Aphra. I'll say that three times fast. And then this is the, the second, print, second appearance, second printing of Darth Vader number four. So uh, we're gonna move on from that because uh, I'm getting tongue-tied trying to say all that. <laughs> so, oh, this is one of my favorites. So here we go. This is um, Spider-Gwen. Um, this is Spider-Man 17 with that famous uh, modern variant that I, in Hyuk Lee, I believe did um, for Ghost Spider number one. Um, which is a lot of money. So this is a Fugazi uh, Panini Comics, Marvel, European, German, uh, Euro, reprint, whatever. Um, now, I have a, a love-hate relationship with this book because um, I bought the, um, the original version of that from somebody online uh, as a pre-order, and then uh, when the book got really hot, they magically canceled my order and uh, refunded my money, and, you know, I couldn't really complain about that, but I wish I had known at the time, because by the time they canceled on me and refunded my money for the original um, version of this, where it says Ghost Spider, not Spider-Man, because this is a reprint. This is not the same book. This is like a German... Uh, you know, sort of reprint thing where they just kind of stole the art. But it's, it looks kind of nice because it doesn't have like a barcode on there or anything. It just has the Spider-Man thing. The other one says Ghost Spider, I believe. And uh, it's got this Marvel Panini, European, whatever that is. And um, this, this um, on the back cover of this says that there's only 333 of these made in Europe, Germany, I think. And um, so I was happy to get that. I got this for a lot cheaper than um, what that other book goes for now. Because I think a 9-8 copy of... The Ghost Spider original of this, I think, is like, you know, $1,000, $1,200, and I'm, I'm not paying that for that shit. But um, the hell with that. But um, I do like the cover, and it's, you know, I'll use this as a placeholder until whatever. Um, I guess that's about as far as I'm going to go with that one. But pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, this is not, um, this is a reprint, but it just uses the artwork, so I think that that's really nice. So I dig it. So, yeah, this is like a European whatever. So... You know, I usually don't collect those, but whatever. Cool. So let's see, what else do we have here? Okay, winding down, guys, almost done. Um, and then, okay, speaking of reprints and things like that, um, this is the second printing of um, Edge of Spider-Verse number two, first appearance of uh, Gwen Stacy as Spider-Gwen. 
So since we mentioned that in the previous one, this is the second printing. You can tell like down in the lower corner there, it says second printing. You can see that right there. And then uh, I always get this because um, I don't think that um, a lot of stores got this. This is a lot more scarce than uh, the first printing. Not more valuable, but more scarce. It is tough to find because I have several copies of all of these books. And um, these ones are a lot tougher to get than the, the first printing and the third printing and even the fourth and fifth printings. Uh, this is really tough to get. And one of the things that's a problem with this book is a lot of them have like rounded, um, you know, ripped, torn slightly corners. And I really don't like that. I know that like they see that as a production error at uh, grading companies, but uh, CGC and CBCS, I guess. But I don't really like that. So um, I look for ones that uh, don't have it or have very, very little bit of it. So um, this is this is a, a very tough book to get, even though uh, it's a second printing. It's not worth quite as much as the other one, but it's a tough find. And um, it usually has like a lot of ticks along here. And uh, sometimes we'll have smudges on this tower right here from like the book that in front of it, like a color rub sort of thing. So um, this book is not easy to get um, in nice high grades. But if you can find it, uh, highly recommend it. So um, I always pick this up when I can find it. Okay, wind it down, guys. Just a few more to go. And then uh, this book is one of my all-time favorites, and I will get this if I can afford it and, and find it um, anytime. So this is Amazing Spider-Man 252. Um, that is the um, tied for the first appearance of the, the black suit symbiote symbiote suit um that he's wearing so that later eventually becomes venom and when when i was a kid this was such a big deal spider-man got a new suit and then later on we found out it was alive and then it led into all the um stuff with secret wars so uh this is one of the best um one of my favorite books i have this in the nine six and the nine eight and i have several copies of this raw and i just love 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 picking this up if i can afford it um really nice um, yeah, this doesn't seem to have um, ticks or anything wrong with it. I, I flipped through this book. The uh, person I bought it from recently, um, you know, let me look through it, and it was it was really nice. There was no problems with it. So this is a, a candidate to probably get graded. So and then another candidate to get graded would be uh, this one. This is heating up recently. This is Wonder Woman 204. This is the first appearance of Nubia, it says here. Um, so... Uh, let's see. So this this um, is the book where Wonder Woman gets her powers back. In the late 60s and early 70s, she had no powers. Um, so this is the first one where she actually has her powers back in it. And um, it has a date stamp on here. I have three copies of this book and two of them have date stamps. And I'm always conflicted about it because, I don't know, I don't really know how I feel about date stamps. Um, yeah, I'll just so you can see that up the top there, November 13th, you can see that. So um, a lot of these books um, seem to have that, and um, it, it's, it's pretty nice, and it's heating up now because um, uh, DC just gave Nubia her own series. I don't know if it's a limited series or ongoing. Um, so I haven't been able to uh, pick it up yet, but I will eventually. So that's the first appearance of um, Nubia, who is supposed to be the first um, black DC superhero um, in DC Comics. So um, my research uh, said that she was the first black superhero in uh, DC copies, comics, who was female, uh, female to boot. So um, yeah, so um, real nice. And uh, she's getting some love now. So, you know, it only took 50 years, but hey, better than nothing. And then this, like I said before, this is the one where Wonder Woman gets her um, powers back and she gets her um, old costume back. Um, and, you know, they pick up where they left off from that because for the years before, last like five or six years prior to that, she had no um, superpowers and she wore like sort of regular clothes. Um, so, yeah, so um, superpowers are back for Wonder Woman and this one, Wonder Woman 204. And that book's getting kind of expensive. And this is a book that I absolutely love. This is the book that um, started me getting into Wonder Woman books. This is Wonder Woman 28. Um, it's a 1 in 25 ratio variant, also known as a steampunk variant, because um, this came out in a month that um, all the 1 in 25 variants for um, the new 52 DC line had a steampunk ratio cover. If um, a store was willing to buy 25 copies, I guess, to unlock that. And this is one of the tougher ones, because this was at a time when Wonder Woman books weren't selling so well. And... Um, 
a lot of shops, only the biggest shops really, were getting the 25. So I have several copies of this. I have a lot of them graded. Um, I love getting this. I got this at that con that I mentioned in Connecticut at the casino and uh, terrific con it was called. And uh, this is great. So this is this is a book I absolutely love getting. And the guy had it on the floor in a box with other random Wonder Woman books and um, just mixed in there. And I, I was able to pull it out and made a deal. And uh, I don't think he realized quite what he had there because uh, he didn't uh, charge me all that much for it. And this book is very, very expensive and very scarce. Hard to get in one of my all-time favorite books because this was a book that got me into reading Wonder Woman when I saw this because I got this on day one. Uh, this came out in 2014. And uh, when I got this, it, it uh, launched me into buying Wonder Woman books because I never uh, was into her when I was a kid because when I was a younger, I only liked Marvel comics. And uh, so this got me, I was sort of exploring, you know, independent books and DC books. And then I got into Wonder Woman because of this book right here. So that's why I love it so much. And uh, it's very, very rare and very expensive. And uh, I have nine eighths of this. And um, yeah, it, it, it's not easy to come by. There's not a lot of them on the census either. But great book and proud to have it in my collection. So, oh, all right. So winding down. So this is... This is a free comic book that I paid money for. <laughs> Here we go. So let me just adjust the camera for you. Yep. So this is, um, they call this Darth Vader, Dr. Aphra number one. And it has the same exact artwork as um, her first appearance in Darth Vader number three. It's the same uh, interior. And it was a free comic book that they, they had given out. Um, to people for nothing, and um, it's it's the same thing, but they call it uh, Darth Vader, Doctor Aphra Number One Halloween Comic Fest. This was a free book, and um, not a lot of these are graded, and a lot a lot of them didn't come back in nine eights because even though it's a free book, the back side of this is tough because it's it's got a black cover, so you can see that, and that would get like a lot of ticks and and um, and stuff on there. So um, this, even though it was a free free book, well, a lot of people probably didn't bag and board them, probably didn't take care of them. Um, yeah, so this, this is not, um, considered her first appearance at all. It is not, but it has the same, um, artwork and it has, um, the same interior. So like, it's very similar to this. This is like the, the third appearance that I showed from earlier on. So, um, the, her first, uh, printing of the first appearance is blue, just like this one that's in the slab. And then, um, it looks just like that. And then, um, just to sort of like, I guess, reinvigorate, sales for Halloween Comic Fest. They decided to uh, reprint that one, and uh, it was a free one. So um, I, I got that on uh, recently on eBay, because um, I was like, wow, you don't see a lot of those. And some of the ones I've seen are not 9 8 even though it's a free book. So I was like, yeah, let me get that. So um, I don't know if it'll ever amount to much, but um, I like collecting these Darth Vader, Dr. Afro books, so I figured it's uh, similar to the other one. So um, we'll just get that. and. That'll be really cool. Okay, guys, one more book to go. This is it. It's it's also a slab, and this is the final book that I'm going to show today. Um, and I got this at the con. So this is a cool book. This is um, this is uh, Star Wars Clone Wars um, number two. This is a 9.8. This is the second appearance of Ahsoka Tano. Um, so uh, I do have the, the first appearance, and it's very, very nice, but I don't have it graded. Um, and I don't see a lot of these books slabbed, and I don't see a lot of them in 9.8. Um, they're tough to come by. So there's Ahsoka right there. So this is her second appearance, not the first, but the second. Um, so this is, this is a cool um, thing to have. In comic book format, I'll say, too, because I think she appeared in some magazines and stuff, too, so I don't want to get into all that. But So, yeah, so this is tough to come by. Um, nice, nice book. This this is when I got it to con, and that was my uh, big purchase for the, um, the Comic-Con. And pretty nice. So, yeah, I don't see a lot of those, and I was pretty happy to get that. So that'll do it for today. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed looking at the, the books that I have. So I'll be doing some more of these in the future, I guess. So I know this is a little long, but uh, hey, got a lot of books and I wanted to show them off and hope that you enjoy them. So thank you for tuning in. I do appreciate it. So 
good to stop by and see some comics. Thank you very much. I do appreciate your time. So take care and be good. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you.